One of my childhood memories is remembering Russian airplanes flying over my city and bombing it, and nobody understood why. I strongly believe that uh, Georgia's future is democracy. And I think most of people believe it. Yes, the government may be successful because they have much more resources, uh, they have much more propaganda tools, and maybe we as a civil society or opposition didn't find the way to unite in a proper way and how to oppose them. But this would eventually come, and I'm sure that we will prevail be that by elections or any other means, but yes, uh, that's very important. Many people in Georgia believe that's not possible as well, uh, and they have a lot of friends and especially young people who kind of gave up on that fight, and unfortunately they're leaving the country. But for now we're optimistic, uh, and also our optimism depends on the support and continued support Georgia has been getting from the West as well, and the likes of European Union, the Western governments, uh, United States, and so on, which have been there supporting Georgian democracy for the last 30 years. Uh, probably without that support, Georgia would be uh, like fully autocratic country, and uh, we also count on that support as well. But we know that it's our fight, and we have to win that fight, and we're trying to do the, and the fight the best way we could. Yeah. And do, you, do you think, because I think there's a bit of a, a paradox about the West for, for quite some time now, that for some reason in the, in the last decades of hyper-globalization and a lot of uh, big changes in the eastern, eastern part of the globe, the West has become increasingly inward-looking, or sometimes it feels like that, and, and has a huge focus on itself, um, and maybe even was too optimistic uh, post-89 or 91 that liberal democracy was the future. Fukuyama even proclaimed the definitive victory of, of democracy. Uh, is the West to, to, to blame for, for autocracy on the rise in the East? Uh, well, I think partially, definitely, yes. And uh, we all know that the war is going in Ukraine, but the revival of Russian imperialism actually started in 2008, and the first country Russia invaded was Georgia. And 20% of my country is still being occupied. So yeah. that war, uh, with all respect, obviously, to Ukraine, is continuation of that imperial campaign. And the West reaction and the politics of appeasement when instead of standing up to Russia and uh, fighting for values, the West was buying more and more Russian oil and gas for a cheaper price and maybe that has caused it. In 2008, uh, Russia invaded Georgia. We got 10,000 of refugees and there was no single sanction imposed on Russia. Putin got with it with no cost. Yeah. And uh, that opened in many opinions, and now in the West as well. If you looked and listened to like the politicians in the West now, and I don't know, like the ex NATO chief, for example, and the ex presidents of the United States and many other countries, they realized it was a mistake. And this opened the way for. Crimea annexation, opened the way for 2014 Donbas invasion and opened the way to what's happening now in Ukraine. And it's uh, good in a way that the West is now understanding that mistake and it's changing its course. But yes, that's the price we all had to pay. And um, unfortunately, uh, many lives were lost and many people's lives have been imposed, and it was a very big impact on Georgia as well, and we could all feel this. Uh, personally, like, uh, I was only 15 years old in 2008, and I still, like, one of my childhood memories is remembering Russian airplanes flying over my city and bombing it, and nobody understood why. And at that time, there was no cost that Russia paid whatsoever for it, and yes, obviously, that's why we think that the West made mistakes.